a wonderful evening here in the show alex and ragnar thursday evening and we welcome the world and um, hi ragnar how are you hi alex i'm excellent i'm really fine very enth enthusiastic about all the things which are going on so i'm watching tv the whole day the news here in the us and it's good it's not going to be a topic here but it's good to have a new show together with you again with wonderful guests Yeah, wonderful guest, and we have a perfect guest for this uh, topic because uh, living next to uh, Pennsylvania, we have met Wade this evening and uh, Sven Seidenberg. And uh, let's see, uh, we can maybe have a question also on this. Uh, what do you think? Uh, how is this going on in the US? But first of all, we want to talk about the last week. Uh, what, what have we seen last week? What did we talk about? I have to think about it. It was. There was something, <laughs> Alex. This, yeah, we, we had. Uh, okay, talk let about me. This later. I'm I'm very very young, so so I can tell you we had we had a Yammer and Martina. team session with Martina. Exactly. Martina yeah. Grom, of course. Exactly, and I was presenting the Yammer roadmap. Yeah, exactly. That was it. So. Um, Write in the comments, please, where are you watching from? Um, we want to see if the world is looking here in our show um, because we have this English show tonight. And as you might know, English is not my favorite language. But let's see uh, how this what's, works uh, today. Alex, what's your favorite foreign language, actually? We can, we can no, switch it on the language. It, it, <laughs> it might be German, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, very good. So, um, first of all, we want to give you an overview. We have a great price this time. As before, um, oh, I forgot the jingle. Wait a second. Oh my God, this English stuff is bringing me completely out of the control. So, Here we go. We have an EPOS ADAPT 560 and you can win it. I already put the um, link in the comments. Uh, I hope you see them there. And um, right now, you can tell us something about the EPOS. Absolutely. If, you, if you've never heard of EPOS, uh, this company was formerly known as uh, Sennheiser. So here you can, you can, you can see a little bit more Let me just switch on my screen. Alex. Uh... Yes, of course. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. Uh, I just tipped in the. Okay, here we go. So, okay. Now, this is so, a black screen. Exactly. Yeah. So, this is the EPOS Adapt 560. So, thanks to the sponsors. This is great because 47 hours of battery life. There's a nice boom arm, and the boom arm is, is very important for the extent um, yeah, audio and microphone quality. And you can really uh, get focus time because this has got A and C on board. So if you're somebody in the, in the background is noisy, your colleagues or your children or I don't know your 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 mother-in-law, then you won't hear anything and you can focus. So it's Bluetooth, A and C, and it has got a Teams button. So at the bottom there is a Teams button, and then you can accept calls and and decline calls. So it's going to be. A very important device here for your working from home situation or wherever you are. Thanks to Epos for sponsoring. Thanks for Epos, right? And um, so this was the intro, what we talked about and uh, what you can win. Um, I will change uh, at the top uh, the QR code on the top right. There you see also the link and the QR code and can use it. Grab the phone from your uh, partner and take a picture of it and take part in this survey and you can win this evening at the end of the show we will see who wins this great headphone so i think we come to the first guess what we have in the show and so let's start here so hello guys welcome to the show Welcome. Thank you very Hi. much for having me. It's really a pleasure. It's our your your our our second guest here from the US. Great to have you here. And also yeah. Swam from northern part of Germany. So 
would you like or, or let me let me let, let me just start a little bit of of, of the introduction where I know you and uh, before before I'm going to start here with Matt I have to put out a picture which I have um which I've made the last time uh, when we've seen each other so due to covid 19 it's a, it's a little bit hard to uh, to uh, to meet but we had an insane thing where we met each other and I'm going to share the picture right with you and then everybody has has to think where this happened so let me just share my screen and then I'm introducing Matt so this is the insane moment where I met and myself <laughs> met the the last time Could that's roughly explain? how I re that's how I remember it too it was blurry it was it was colorful it was everything so this was the first time in my in my life when I was driving a roller coaster, drinking a beer, and uh, <laughs> this was in what was it in Orlando, uh, Florida, and 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 we were in the in the children in the children theme park because this mm -hmm. was the this was the part which we could at, at Microsoft ignite. This was the part which we could manage after a few beers and a few burgers and and pizza mm -hmm. because the other roller coasters were too heavy and too yeah, challenging. So we so went into the children theme park. If we, really we smuggled. We smuggled the cheap American beer onto the child. It wasn't even a roller coaster. It was like a slow but high train, and you weren't yeah. allowed to bring any drinks with you. So we slipped them into our pockets, and we totally got away with it, and uh, felt like total badasses. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I really <laughs> miss this kind of uh, of events like night. It was, so, it was mm -hmm. so much fun. But it's good to have you here. And um, Matt, you are you are an MVP Office Apps mm -hmm. and Services. Correct. Very, very, spe very spe specialized on the, on the on the whole suite. Um, you are also a well-known person around everything for the for the periodic system. So in the past, actually, when I was in school, I hated chemistry. But since I've seen your your periodic system, um, this is something what where uh, what maybe everybody knows you. So um, I'm going to 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 give a very sneak preview into your tables, and for our. Let me let me let me just just share my screen for a second and then we jump directly to Sven. But then people people know what your history is also. Um, so you are the inventor here of the periodic table of, of Office 65, which is available in many different languages, for example, also in German. Mm -hmm. And that's something what you have created and everybody can use the periodic table, which I personally find very <laughs> valuable to have all the Microsoft of 65 tools um, clustered in, in, in different different uh, pillars here. So personally, I, I've, I've used it many, many times and it's, a, it's available in different languages. So that's how many people know you. Mm -hmm. And um, is there something you would you would like to to add, Matt, about your about your? Uh, no, I guess I'll say I'm, I'm calling in from from upstate New York, uh, where I live and grew up, about two and a half hours north by train or by car of uh, from New York City. Um, kind of close to Pennsylvania, I guess, a lot yes. closer mm -hmm. than you guys are, but not as close as you may think. Um, the U.S. Is, is a little bit bigger than you might think it is, I guess. Um, and I don't know, I guess I'm an engineer originally, kind of fell into the SharePoint and Office 365 world sort of by mistake and ended up really liking that. And the periodic table, uh, I also hated chemistry. I loved physics. That's why I became a civil engineer originally. Um, but it just turned out that when I laid things out, it just looked like the periodic table. And that's just an easy concept that everybody has to learn about at some point in their life, whether they have bad memories or good ones, but they can at least relate to it. So I got that blog youtube kind of all over the all over the board these days yeah great and from the northern part of germany or northern west we have uh, sven i think sven you're living somewhere in the osnabrück <coughs> area i think and yes. you are working for a microsoft partner called bright skies yeah wonderful partner and you are you're having a consultant role and i think your everything is is around office 65 now modern workplace yeah yeah, I'm working for, for Breitke, as you mentioned, um, living in Osnabrück. Um, my main focus is Microsoft Teams. Um, I'm dipping into the Power Platform a little bit um, in, the, in the latest days. And um, the whole part of change and adoption in Microsoft Citrix 5 projects. Mm -hmm. That's what I focus on, also on the community part. Yeah. So and the question is why we have you both together here, because you have a, a part what you're doing together, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. So um, 
in the past, I've worked on a couple of special projects with uh, Microsoft partner Avpoint out of uh, Washington, D.C., and uh, originally put out an ebook of probably more than a year ago or more at this point on just basic Teams etiquette. And I use the word etiquette instead of like tips and tricks or best practices because I think those terms are a little bit um, beaten to death at this point. Um, and etiquette really is just how should you use the app in the best way possible to ensure efficiency, but also respect for your fellow employee or, or peer. Um, and after putting that out, a um, lot of, lot of um, happy, I guess I'll say customers, it's free. Anybody can get it. You can add it you know, as a tab in your Teams channel right now if you want to. Um, there were a lot of questions about uh, meetings. So I decided to dive into meetings and uh, uh, Sven and I have been um, interacting on, on um, a bunch of community stuff in the past too. So I reached out to him to see if he'd be willing to help me out with that, both in review and offering some feedback and whatnot. So this is a sort of a joint project that we did with AppPoint. They put it out and posted it for us, put together the beautiful graphics and whatnot, but the content is us. And uh, it's now something that we present on a lot of different conferences. Great. Okay, super. Um, so well, before we start, uh, Ragnar, just wait a second, just before we start, for the uh, um, attendees watching here, um, just give us some questions in the in the comments. If you want to know something about Matt or Sven, um, just put it in the comments and we will show it in the in the show and uh, they will ask your questions. Um, so just to give this information to all who are watching Ragnar. So in this in this ebook you've shared many different kind of of um, recommendations here. How would you continue? Would you would you start with the with the top five and you counting down from five to zero to, uh, to one? So it's up to you. How would you like how you would like sure. to share it or from, or from A to Z? That's so I'm going to actually pass off to Sven and I'm going to let you start with what you think are a couple of your favorite sort of uh, takeaways or, or you know. Uh, I'll say nuggets. That's always the, the phrase, at least in the US, when you go to a conference. What are those nuggets you walk away with? And mm -hmm. um, doing this pro project, it was fun because you really start to actually really get into the details of how the app works and doesn't work sometimes. Uh, and that, those are the kind of good things. So, Sven, I'm going to let you start. And um, if you want, I can, I can bounce into slides or uh, it's up to you. I think I can do it so this way. Um, okay. I think my favorite part is the, the whole chapter of uh, the non- teams related stuff. So uh, the non-technical stuff, um, those behaviors or, or things you want to do to create a productive and successful meeting, um, stuff you do in advance and during the meeting or even after the meeting. Um, I think this is something um, many people um, yeah, maybe not have in mind yet because they're not working that much remote or at least did <laughs> before COVID-19. Um, so I think there's a lot of information for people out there. Um, and we've been on another podcast uh, together um, at the beginning of the year. And I also told it um, there, um, the favorite thing about Microsoft Teams meetings for me is that it works so simple and it works. So you click a link, um, you're joining the meeting, um, you see everybody, you hear everybody normally, and um, you can just start, start being productive and uh, start yeah, start your meeting. And um, one specific thing um, Matt um, mentioned in the ebook um, is using the chat during the meeting, not only for um, yeah the unusual stuff, but also for um, adding information, adding resources. So if someone is in a meeting is talking about uh, a, a thing um, someone maybe doesn't know, um, you can drop in additional information, a Word document you have in your repository, or a link to a website where it's explained um, something a little bit more deeper. Those are the things I really like about the, the whole ebook. Should we should we uh, talk um, should we talk also about the meeting notes here because that's something to be very honest with you which I'm using mm -hmm. far too less so really you know nobody's listening here I think I've used the meeting notes maybe like five times in my in my whole life because I always forget to use the meeting notes there is a little button mm -hmm. to 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 populate them all automatically but I never never use them and that's a pity because it's it's so it's so powerful and I also have a lot of of series um you know regular meetings which are, which are happening like every every week and so on and I'm not using it and it doesn't make sense that I'm using my OneNote my personal OneNote where nobody can look into it 
but I could really use this one more, yeah, for the scheduled meetings much more often. But I have to create for myself a new ha habit, a micro habit, to remind mm -hmm. myself uh, to, uh, to use it really in every meeting. Yeah, the, the uh, meeting notes is an interesting one because meeting notes are actually just a rebranded version of the Teams wiki, which is probably one of the most hotly contested topics in the whole e ecosystem of Microsoft Teams. Uh, some people hate the wiki, and the one, first thing they do is second. they delete it. Yeah. <laughs> Dear audience, everybody who's listening now, please tell us, do, who is yeah. the one who loves wikis? I want to know yeah. who, who from our audience <laughs> loves wikis, because usually everybody hates wikis. And I, share I'm, in the comments. I'm a fan of the concept of a wiki. It's just the execution of the wiki in Teams is not necessarily mm -hmm. very good unless you know what you're walking into. It's really one of those, be prepared and don't do something willy-nilly. Be strategic and choose to use that because there are some downsides. One of those downsides, it is not indexed for search. So mm -hmm. if you go to search for something later, it will not pop up. Uh, so you need to be aware of that. But it is nice that it's right there in the meeting and you can just click meeting notes, opens up, it's reasonably easy to edit, um, and other people can edit it as well at the same time. I don't know what the, the uh, options are for external sharing or if the external folks can edit it as well, but that, that would just be one of those things you can test. But um, it's one of those, if you, if you like the wiki, uh, that's great, but you may not realize that the Teams meeting notes are actually a wiki. And if you, are, if you do like OneNote and you have a shared OneNote with your team and you know whatever your channel uh, is where you meet regularly internally, or maybe you just make it one note file that you share from your OneDrive with everybody, and that's where you have your series and you keep notes there. If you love OneNote, use OneNote. There's no reason not to, right? Um, but yeah, the meeting the meeting notes can be really useful, but again, it's just one of those, know what you're getting yourself into because it's kind of hard to back out of it if you've already gotten into it. Yeah, I think you're not alone with with uh, your problem, Ragnar. Um, I, I just checked back in the in the ebook, and uh, we also write there uh, use OneNote for creating meeting notes. <laughs> we do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just and noticed that. And and that's because yeah. OneNote is that app that. And I'm actually I'm looking at the paper version in front of me just to like refresh my memory here. But uh, yeah, exactly. Um, in, I'm in the process of writing a Teams user guide, a book that's going to be published in the next few months. And mm. I've gotten so deep in the weeds of all of these little micro features. Um, the whole chapter I have or section that I have on taking notes during a meeting, yeah, it starts out with those meeting notes because it's the first thing that you see. So if you're new to Teams, you may just click that and say, let's use it, right? But there's nothing stopping you from keeping a OneNote file or uh, you know, using a Word document if you want to. Maybe you have a, a template for meeting minutes that's more formal and more specific to your organization, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, we um, have uh, yeah, very different answers here, uh, but uh, I think the main uh, answers are that they don't use the wiki and they change it to OneNote uh, as they can start off. But also some information just Andreas uh, wrote down here. Okay, it's very useful for regular regularities in teams like how do we collaborate and etc. So maybe it's uh, is, that could be a point where you, where we can pin posts. This will be a function coming up. Um, maybe also there's a place where we can write down how we will collaborate in this channel, in the pin post. We will see. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But this. Um, I was I was I was just talking about these little micro habits which we which we have to use and always forget. What are the the best teams meeting recommendation which you always recommend but you always forget by yourself? Oh, <clears throat> I don't I know. I'm, I'm a um, I'm a real stickler for always mute when you're not talking, but I definitely follow that one. Yeah. I have to think yeah. About that. So now the, is a time to commit. Uh, do you have something to to, to confess here? Something where yeah, you I, always I have preach and always forget. But, um, I don't want to uh, to say I'm on the same side as Matt, but um, that's a problem for me too. Um, but um, one thing, uh, not a team thing, but um, to really. Um, yeah, point out who is taking notes in the meeting. Uh, sometimes this is uh, something I totally forget about. Then everyone yeah. writes something down for himself. And after mm -hmm. that, we combine all the notes and um, yeah, end yeah. up with a yeah. pretty much. That's a good one. 
one that I actually that I am probably guilty of not doing correctly, uh, and I really think that the feature is good is the raising your hand so that you're making it clear that you want to say something. Incidentally, if you didn't know, when you raise your hand uh, and you look at the participant pane, the, the people pane, they're actually in the order from top to bottom of who yeah. raised their hand first, which I didn't realize until most recently, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, but if you don't, if everybody doesn't agree on that, we'll call that a social norm, I guess, uh, then nobody should be raising their hand if the facilitator is not going to call on them. And if I'm the facilitator mm -hmm. and I forget to check the hands, what's the point? Because people are just going to jump in and, and, you know, butt the line effectively. So, you know, being in, being in charge of that and keeping it actually running is, I think, important because if those people have something to say, they should be saying it and they shouldn't have to wait in line or be, you know, disrespected by somebody jumping ahead in line from them. Yeah. yeah. Now for Let's me, it's, it's, it's time to confess. So I'll also have a confession. I'm personally a big believer that the best results in a meeting, the best meeting outcomes would be if you, if everybody is fully aware of the agenda. So I always used to preach, uh, preach, let me look. I always mm -hmm. used to preach that uh, you really have to have a meeting agenda before you invite. And in 95% of the cases, I just forget to send out a meeting um, yeah, agenda. Yeah. And then the meeting, and then we have to define the agenda while having a meeting. But for the preparation, it's always so much better when really the whole agenda points and the outcome is defined in advance. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Alex, if you can if, if you could share my screen for one moment, um, yeah. I, I kind of want to echo what what um, well, what Ragnar just said, but also what Zman had said before. Uh, a lot of times it's really just, it's not about what you're using. I don't care in this case if you use Teams or if you use WebEx or if you use something else. Uh, it comes down to, do you know how to run a meeting? And there's a lot to it, right? So there's the agenda, there's define the success of it, right? Because if four people walk into a meeting all expecting, all defining success for themselves as different things, that's a wasted meeting completely. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are inviting the wrong people, if you're over inviting, that's a waste of time for the people that don't need to be there. Or if you don't bring the key decision makers in, those people, uh, you, you basically are going to cancel the meeting probably at the last second. And then the other thing is sharing the information and the resources to those people ahead of time. Mm. Um, and I'm really big on pushing, you know, if, it, if it's an internal meeting, post the agenda, you know, the KPI dashboard report, uh, the whatever presentation somebody has to give, put that right into a folder for the date of the meeting. Or if it's an external meeting, put it right in your OneDrive and share the link to the OneDrive so people can see it ahead of time. They know what to expect. And that really set, settles or uh, levels that whole expectations thing too, because if people see content in that presentation that they didn't expect, that changes what they now expect as being the outcome of that meeting. Um, and then a couple other kind of basic ones is to have roles, you know, a timekeeper, keep people on, on topic, have a parking lot, a uh, place to put topics where people don't, you know, have time to talk about and then have those, those notes. And the biggest thing is going to be taking uh, actions, action items, who's supposed to do it and when it's due is critical, right? Because if you don't, if you don't actually do anything with the meeting, what was the point of the meeting, right? Yeah. Matt, let's stop here for one second. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to talk about the timekeeper. Who sure. of you, and I'm also talking here to the to the audience, please write in the comments, who has experience with the back-to-back -back meetings? Uh, because I find this person extremely annoying to have a day <laughs> of four hours without any single bio break, no input, output. I don't want to go further, but you know what I mean? For four hours where I have like, like usually like eight meetings in four hours. Uh, this is for me very, very challenging. So, so I'm, I would like to use more in the future, the outlook feature, and it's can be configured in outlook on the web in the calendar section to have that the meetings should, uh, should uh, stay, uh, should, um, sh should only be like 25 minutes and not 30 minutes. So, yeah. so to just pre prevent that everything is always overlapping. And because this is for me creating a lot of stress and I want to prevent it. So I want like 25 minutes meetings and then I have a break where I can get a fresh coffee. That's what I want. So that's for me one of the biggest pain pain points in my daily life, back to back. Yeah, definitely. I hate it. I'm pretty sure you know this, yeah. but uh, there's some, maybe the audience doesn't know. Um, there's a setting in Outlook and Outlook Online um, where you can automatically schedule your meetings to 25 or 50 minutes. I think if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that is yeah, correct. It is. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Very handy. 
Okay, I, w I want to come back to some questions from the um, comments and I have to scroll up a little bit because we have many, many people. And the first one was Andreas um, asking Matt, how do you stay Ooh. up to date with the whole Microsoft 365 ecosystem? Now, okay, we're leaving a little bit the meetings tab, but we come back to meetings uh, once more. But maybe you can ask this question, uh, you can answer this question. Definitely. So uh, I will say my favorite source right now is the, uh, and this is more of a, an emergency situation, is um, using the um, M, M, or, uh, Microsoft or M MSFT365 status account on Twitter, uh, because that uh, you don't need to have access to the admin center to get anything uh, from that. Um, they will report when services are down, which is useful because any user could actually follow that. That is one of the only Twitter push notifications that I get. The other one is Donald, or nope, sorry. The other one is Twitter safety, because I love uh, finding out when they happen to um, muzzle Donald Trump. And uh, that's essentially where I'm I'm at for that. The other, and I'm gonna put this in, I think I can put this in the Every word counts. comments. Yes, right. <laughs> um, actually, I'm not sure how to send a chat into Keep the comments. In the so Alex. Put yeah, in the private so I'm chat gonna, and I will shift it. Over. Yeah, every I follower a, counts. Uh, so thanks everybody for joining today. <laughs> every follower, every audience, every people here count. Definitely. You're very and there's a link that um, Alex is going to share that I have a blog post uh, that basically covers nine really good sources that I use for keeping up to date. One is going to be the roadmap, right? But the roadmap is a lot of marketing fluff. So you don't really necessarily want to depend on that. They don't like to give dates all the time. Um, another one's going to be you know some community sources where people provide a little bit of insight on what things are that are going to change. Um, so if anything, I would take a look at that blog post. And uh, yeah, the answer, you're probably going to say, why do I need nine things to follow to do this? And my answer is, it's just the way it is. And if you want to, you know, look at it positively, call it job security. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Thank you. And one more from Tomislav. What do you think of the possibilities that the new Microsoft Stream will offer us? Storing videos in OneNote and SharePoint for meeting recordings helps with many use cases like sharing. Sven, what do you think of the new uh, the stream changes? I'm kind of curious because I'm not working with customers directly right now, but I know you are. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, the current situation um, is, yeah. It sometimes is a pain for, for sharing external, and then you have to download it and upload it to your OneDrive and share it external. Um, I think that created a lot of pain, especially for end users who have maybe even problems to um, with the meeting itself um, and to think about how can I share it afterwards or oh, download, upload, back and forth. Um, so I think this will um, help a lot with um, make it more accessible to, to end users. Um, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Alex, if you uh, can share my screen for a second, I'm just going to show um, folks what to expect on this one. So major announcement at Ignite was that Microsoft Stream, almost the entire like foundation of it for its storage solution, at least, is being completely redone. For whatever reason, the Stream team decided to build their storage on, on I, I think it's Azure Blob Storage. I could be wrong. That's a bit outside of my technical expertise. But they have moved now to SharePoint and OneDrive. When you create a meeting moving forward, uh, you and, the, uh, and you record a meeting, if the meeting is a channel meeting, so inside a team, that meeting will automatically be stored as an MP4 file in a folder called recordings in the team. So accessible to everybody. That is the only situation that any meeting recording will ever end up in SharePoint. For every other meeting, it will end up in OneDrive and it's gonna end up in the OneDrive of the person who presses record. That's really important because now it matters who presses record because they own the file after that. It makes things a lot easier to share, like Sven was saying. So you can open it up in OneDrive, get a link, share it with the people from uh, externally, which before you'd have to download the file from the stream web portal, upload it into OneDrive, get the link and share it. Now it's already in, in OneDrive, you've kind of skipped a couple steps. But the downside that I've uh, come to realize is you lose the whole web video experience. So these files are just files. They're just like a, a Word document or a PDF. They're just sitting in your OneDrive. So if you liked the web experience in stream and you liked the captions or the transcript automatically being attached to that video, you now have to go in and download the video file, upload it to stream, download the transcript and upload that to stream to attach it to the video file. So for anybody that was depending on this sort of ladder discussion, which is I liked the stream experience, 
they are now getting stuck with the extra steps that the people that were that felt that external sharing is more important were kind of stuck with in the past. So it's just kind of something to keep in mind. The experience of playing a file or a video file in OneDrive and SharePoint is currently subpar, I guess he's putting it nicely. It is going to be replaced eventually by Stream. Stream is actually gonna start being the default player for video files within SharePoint and OneDrive, but that's not here yet. It's not gonna be here for a number of months. The other thing is to get this new experience, you have to not only, um, well, you have to enable it in the admin center. And right now it's an opt-in situation. Within the next month or two, it's gonna become an opt-out situation. And then a month or two after that, I think could be wrong. It's gonna be, there's no opt-out option available and everybody will be now on this new stream experience for all meeting recordings. Yeah. So this would be absolutely great. You know, I'm working for an ISV company who are producing migration tools. And for us, the migration between tenants is now so much easier because now we can we can just migrate the meeting content based on stream um, running on OneDrive. Now it's super easy. In the past, it was just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So it's... We, it's a it kind of comes down actually. to what your priorities are. It, it, it you yeah. know, some people love this, some people hate it. Actually, yeah, yeah. No, that's a very good one. Okay, please. What what else would you like? Would you like to share? Well, I'll or jump into mm -hmm. I'll jump into a couple that I think were the big ones for me when I was putting this together. Um, and actually, we still have to update a little bit because I've had some discoveries uh, since then. Uh, the first is uh, right now, I'm not the biggest fan of the PowerPoint sharing tool that's built into a meeting. So I actually like to tell people to use PowerPoint in a different way. Um, you can actually use a PowerPoint slideshow and present it as its own window. Uh, and if you can, uh, once you start presenting, you can share that as a window in Teams. And then there's this little trick that I don't even think that they designed it this way, just as a happy little accident. If you right click on the, on the slides, there's an option to show presenter view. So you can get presenter view, but the recipients or the, the attendees actually see the slides while you see presenter view while you're sharing the window, which is just really, really slick little trick that I, it just took a lot of kind of playing around to realize that that was a thing. Um, I also like to be able to manage my video, my face with my content. Teams is not very good at that. And I know that they've announced that they're gonna have the ability to put like your cutout of your face in front of a background, like your slides, and that's great but that's not coming for probably a number of months still. Uh, so the ability to take, for example, your um, a webcam, basically video cam, and show that next to something else. So in this screenshot, you see me having, uh, I use a Mac and I have QuickTime open. Well, QuickTime can show a live feed of my video feed, my uh, uh, webcam, and next to it, I have whiteboard, where it could be PowerPoint in uh, one of those uh, window situations. Could be um, a OneNote you know, that I'm taking notes on so everybody can see what I'm working on. Or, hey, we're working on a document right now. We need to update the corporate policies. Here's the file that we're working on. So they can see my face, my presentation, all that kind of stuff without seeing just the little piece of me in the bottom of the, yeah. the Teams rail when I'm sharing content. So this is essentially one whole screen, has my video, has my content. And if you're using Windows, you can use the built-in camera, although it does have a lot of buttons in Chrome. So you could also use VLC Media Player, or there's a couple other um, camera apps out there that you can use to stream. If you try to do it and it tells you that uh, there's no webcam available, just turn your video off in Teams, in Windows, whatever reason, Teams hogs the video feed. Let me ask now our, um, our audience here, who is using the default original Microsoft whiteboard application to run Teams? And who is using other applications like Consupport, like Mural, who's also using very advanced things like, uh, like the whiteboard a content capturing feature of uh, Teams meetings where you can really use your camera. Uh, there are only a few cameras which support it, but you could use your, your cameras and and um, make a, a capture of your physical whiteboard and then just virtualize it and give it back to the meeting. So that's something which, which is very fancy and I really like, but I but I haven't used it because I'm using different cameras. So please share with me in the, in the comments which kind of whiteboarding tool you are using and if you find this useful. Personally, that's that's also, also going, going back to the micro habit topics. I I like whiteboarding, I, I see the value, um, but I do it maybe like once a month. So it's not one, yeah. of, one of my daily habits to use whiteboards. Yeah, It's really big for, uh, for teachers. Teachers use it constantly. 
Um, yeah. Yep. And I've, I've been working with a lot more teachers lately. Yep. Since they, a, lot of, a, lot of them, a lot of them have gotten sucked into Teams uh, by no choice of their own over the last couple of months because they were all using Zoom five months ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, uh, we use uh, the whiteboard very often, maybe because we have also two Surface hubs in our company. And um, this is so great tool also on the on the surface laptops um, and because you can uh, store them in the cloud and you get back always or you write down on the surface hub and you save them and you get back on your laptop to the uh, direct whiteboard what mm -hmm. i do not use uh, so often is whiteboard in teams meetings of course because this is not so easy to handle except uh, you ha you're working on the surface hub then it's very easy so um well I, i love the whiteboard i have to say well i'm the timekeeper for today because i don't know where the time went but um when i have to, to look at the clock it's it's almost over so what about some last uh, statements uh, for today sven uh, about meetings any good uh, tips following To get a um, rock star. <laughs> read the ebook. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, just kidding. Um, yeah, I think um, take some time um, to yeah create your own schedule for for meetings. Um, to to decide what you want to do before a meeting, what you want to do during a meeting and after a meeting, because not everything we talked about or every point we point out in the ebook um, is fits for everyone um mm -hmm. so you should get um rid of those not fitting your situation and um building your own perfect rockstar meeting um and then try to adapt it in your daily work i think um that's you know getting started working on the meeting habits great okay mad also yeah, one last uh, thing go ahead Oh, I thought Do you had one, one more last thing. thing. Sure. So uh, if you share my screen once more, uh, this is one of my more favorite um, features. And I think, I don't know if it's actually active right now or if it's coming in a, in a little bit, but the ability to uh, jump from your desktop. And if you have to get on the road, you know, you need to get in your car or this something and keep, stay on the phone. Um, all you have to do is click join on the phone and it gives you the option to either add the device or transfer to the, to the device. It's amazing. It works so flawlessly. And both options are really useful. Um, if you have the situation where you're just working on one screen and you're presenting and you want to be able to keep track of the chat or the meeting itself, you can use uh, your phone or even like an iPad and you can join the meeting as uh, a new device, but you still use. So you're in the meeting twice, very useful. Or if you're just on the go, throw your headphones in, join from your phone and you'll move from your desktop to your, your phone and uh, no, no problem whatsoever. And it just goes, it works. And I love it. I think it's very, very handy. Well, you can use it also the way back. You can uh, have the call on your m mobile phone and you get mm -hmm. to your desktop version and you can switch to the desktop. True. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you guys have any interest, the sort of um, resources that I usually show for uh, sessions like this, uh, especially like the, um, Uh, the ebook itself. So the, this ebook here, the third option there, uh, that's going to get you this free thing. There's no email requirement to like, you know, it's not like one of those marketing landing pages where you have to supply, supply your email address to get access to this thing. Uh, there's a web page version. There's a PDF version you can download if that's easier to share internally. And there's the etiquette guide after that and a few other things if you have any interest. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Very nice. There are a few comments uh, here from Sascha Friedrich um, around whiteboarding and, and, and Surface Hubs. And here I would like to spend one single second and show you about a new feature which I have discovered two days ago. Um, so Microsoft Teams Room will get whiteboarding, will get the whiteboard app soon. So I think Excellent. December is going to be the date for for whiteboard app for Microsoft Teams Rooms. So that's something what I would like to, to, to also play more well, around here. Yeah. Even better is you have the meeting room in a, a switched together with a Surface Hub in the same room, as we know mm -hmm. from uh, Christian, who worked on this uh, collaborative together. No, what was it called? I, I forgot it. Where we can have the call on the meeting room system and the whiteboard using the same uh, session. Okay. Yeah. So guys, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> that you came to our show and uh, there was pretty much content in here and um, yeah it was really great to have you here Ragnar. thanks so much yeah absolutely. yeah it was great great being here guys i, I guess as my uh, ancestors would say or my uh, 
I guess the answer. That's just Danka. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so Thanks we come having us. To the next part, Sven, uh, have a nice evening and uh, maybe you see the rest of the show here uh, with us. And uh, so till the next time, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Matt. Bye, bye Sven. Thank so, and we come to the community updates. And let's see, we have some Europe um, dates here for um, October, November, December, of course, from Michael Gret. Here the uh, events, uh, have a look on, have an eye on the Ezra meetup in Cologne and the Office 365 meetup in Cologne. And Thanks to all the organizers here, like Rafael Kölner and so on. You're doing a great job. It's a lot of work, I know it. Yeah, on yeah, this meeting Sascha Friedrich. Yeah. Any others? yeah. We have picked out some uh, specials. I know uh, this is the third time we're talking about it's the ACM Teams Europe, but maybe we have some different language people here in uh, because this is also an English uh, event that we have on uh, next, no, not next Tuesday. It's uh, Tuesday in one week. And we're talking about ACM, Adoption and Change Management. Uh, then we have the Collab 365 Global Con 4. And we have the last uh, two dates in November 10 and in December beginning. It's a big event also. And we have the Quest event. Mm -hmm. Ragnar, just yeah. tell My us session a is, bit a, about is, it. A, is about Sharpen modernization. So I will go very, very deep into the PNP community uh, things like the like the Sharpen modernization scripts, which are free from Microsoft. So, and I'm going to show a lookbook things. So, a lot of demos in my session and everything is free, what I'm going to present. Great. And the uh, last one, uh, one of the last one is the AMS, AMS Germany from Michael. Um, this is also a great event. Uh, thank you very much um, that you are doing this. Uh, they will be on the 1st of December and it's also free to attend. And the last one we have is the Collab Days. Right now. Thanks also to the organizers like Tommy Gullis from Zolovion and Corinna from MSG. Yeah. Okay. Very good. These are the uh, events. So we come to the contest. Uh, you can win a headset and we will see who won the headset today. Okay, here you can see it once more, the EPOS ADAPT 5.6.0. And we have a great um, contestant. Um, so let's see who won this great headset. It's about Steffen Herzog. Steffen, hey, um, congrats. Congrats. Yeah. Quite. Great. This is your prize, but you will get a fresh and new one. So this, that's my version here. <laughs> Don't worry. That's good. Okay, so then we have a, um, a look what is coming up in the next week. Uh, what we are talking about, uh, this will be Raphael Körner will meet. Uh, it's also an MVP and we are starting with our uh, series about teams governance um, because the following dates we also have some people in our show. Um, they are showing tools around governance, but we start with Raphael um, this is, I hope this will be a German show <laughs> once more, <laughs> much better for me yeah. then. Um, so uh, we have Raphael there and we'll, we'll talk about all the things around governance. Okay. So let's see in the comments once more, is there something we have to talk? Okay. Oh, you did it. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Talk now. So I have a look at the watch. Okay, it's a quarter to uh, ten, so we are we in need time. We to move to heute, to heute journal. Lots of news, and let's see how the situation in Pennsylvania, Nevada, Georgia. What did you miss? Yeah, yeah. Alaska okay. is going on. So let's. Uh, I see our guests are still in the stream here, so we get them back, and we say thank you very much once more. And hope to see you once again here in our show or maybe on one on the stages uh, out there when we can meet once more in real life. Okay.
Thanks so Have much. Have a good time. And Thanks all the best to the US. Goodbye. Every guest counts. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.